The Old Testament contains scriptures that beckons God's face to shine upon them. In Numbers 6.25, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Psalms 31 and 16, make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Psalm 67 and 1, God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us. Psalms 80, verse 3, verse 17, and verse 19. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Psalms 119 and 135. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise. Shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Daniel 12 and 3 says, And they that be wise shall shine as brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. This morning, our morning's text is Jesus talking. Jesus is talking, he's preaching, he's sharing, he's allowing himself to spend time with people and I've learned that when the Lord is talking, we ought to take heed. When God is talking, there's time to pay attention closely to what the Lord is saying because when the master is giving instructions, we need to take copious notes. Jesus informs his captive audience about living as lights in a dark world. And it is as if he is suggesting that those of us who are lights must undim our lives so that God's life can shine through us. Paul raises this argument over in Philippians 2.15 when he says, you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault amid a crooked and perverse generation, here it is, among whom you shine as lights in this world. Let me make my case this morning, seeing that I, I've, I've gotten your attention. Um, you heard of a dimmer switch in your house, haven't you? It controls the room's volume and velocity of light. The idea is to create a mood and an ambience. My, uh, 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 ambience, that word is carried around my house often. Ambience, to set the atmosphere for enjoying the moment. Stages and theaters use lights to create imagery that aids in defining the scene and adding dramatic alliances to the event. They do this so that the audience can find their place in the movie or play and become enveloped in the event. But inside of the dimmer switch, Brother Allen, there is what is called a variable resistor. The variable resistor is an electronic component designed to control the energy that it will allow to flow through to the light. The light bulb appears dimmer, here it is, but it takes more electrical current to divert it through the resistor. Here is my argument today. Jesus says, let your light, let, that, that word L-E-T, let, which means allow the light, permit the light. Authorize the light, grant the light, give sanction for the light, empower the light, give license to the light, enable the light, and cause the light to shine through you. Jesus, 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 when he says, let the light, here is my argument. Brother Smith, Brother Raymond Smith, here's my argument. Uh, then who controls how much light shines through you? I want to suggest that the antithesis is to figure out why we don't or why we can't let our light shine the way God would want our lights to shine. And it's this old thing that we don't like to talk about is called sin. Sin is our biggest problem for not allowing God's light to shine through us because the last time I checked, God ain't ran out of power. Here it is, here it is, the Bible says it, here it is. I'm, I'm going to stay Bible today because I, I have some very intellectual New Testament and Old Testament scholars in the building, but I'm going to bring it to you. The Bible says all have sinned and come short. And you know who all includes, right? 
everybody. I mean, all suggests that you can't escape this because I'm talking about you too. I'm talking about everybody. The Bible says, the Bible says, so, so, so if all have sin and come short of the glory, then sin, sin dims our light because we live before our, below our light flow capacity. Oh, I'm going to help somebody today if you, if you, if you understand what I'm... Uh, sin troubles you to the point that you can't live up to the capacity to let your light shine. In other words, God sends the light and sometimes we miss it. Sin does our, dulls our glow because it pollutes our character. I always tell people, I really ain't got time to keep up with show stuff because I'm too busy trying to work on my own. And, 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 and what's wrong with me really ain't none of your business. That's between me and God. And what's wrong with you ain't none of nobody else's business. That's between you and God. But let's just be honest. We all got some areas of improvement that we need to work on regardless of what anybody else has to say. Sin darkens our continents because it poisons our effectiveness. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to raise my antithesis, but I'm going to give you some answers to sin. Just hold on just a few minutes. Sin deadens our radiance because it dilutes our qualities. You ain't all that you're capable of being because sin is troubling your life. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know folk don't like to talk about sin. They want to point out sin, but they don't want to talk about sin. Sin is our resistance to the glory of God beaming through our lives. However, I like God. Because every time God has an issue with us, he has an answer for our issue. And all we have to do is hang around long enough in his word, we'll find the answer to our issue. Here it is. God has already given you and I a remedy for our sin. Lest we forget that Jesus was the propitiation for our sin and the whole world. In other words, Jesus is the remedy for your past sin, your right now sin, and the sin you're going to start doing on tomorrow. Nobody wants to talk about that. But the Bible says, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the presence of this evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Jesus is the answer for our sin. Bible says, he who owns himself, bear our sins in his own body upon a tree, and that we, being dead to sin, may live unto righteousness. Here it is. By whom stripes ye were healed. Uh, I have these super sophisticated uh, grammar English professionals in my congregation. And, and they would tell you that ED is, means past tense. The text says you were healed, not you're going to be healed. You were healed back at Calvary, not you're going to be healed. Nobody wants to talk to me. You were already healed of whatever you're dealing with when Jesus died on Calvary. That's all the text is really trying to tell you. Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Listen to this. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Let me help you. Let me help you hold on to your hope right now. Listen to this. You have been forgiven of your sin, not based upon your righteousness, but based upon the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God moves your transgressions from your record. In other words, when God says you're forgiven, no matter how far east or far west you go, you will never run into that again. Because when God says you're forgiven, it doesn't come back up anymore. Ah, they're going to make me work today, Sister Erica. So how do we deal with sin? Let me, let me argue my case a little bit more. If we confess our sin, he is faithful to forgive us of our sin and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here it is. If we confess, 
our stuff. Instead of trying to blow up everybody else's stuff, God has guaranteed in his word that he's able to forgive us and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ah, da, 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 da. The Bible says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. I like this. For ye were under the law, but now you're under grace. For those people who are so legalistic in their religiosity, I'm under grace. That means your laws don't apply to me. The problem with the Old Testament religious Sanhedrin minded council people is that they didn't die in the past. We got some cousins around our churches now. They're legalists. They hold everybody else to the Bible and then they live their own lives their way because they don't want nobody to pay them any attention because they're too busy quoting and toting scripture and you can't even see a scripture nowhere in their life. Mm. Nobody wants to talk to me about that. I live under grace because it's by grace that I'm saved. That's why I can't boast. It's a gift of God. God gave us the gift of salvation, and we ought to live like we got a gift that we're happy we got. <sighs> ah, listen to this. For if we sin willfully after that, we have not received the knowledge of truth. Therefore, there remains no more sacrifice for our sin. Once you know the truth, there is no more sacrifice for your sin. So, Pastor, you argued your antithesis. Can you, can you give us something positive to roll with this morning? I'm glad you asked. I got three things I want to drop on you, and I promise you I'll get out of your way. How can we shine in 2023? I got a few suggestions. Let me drop them on you. We shine by not allowing unconfessed sin to clog us up with guilt. Ah. Ah. When your sink bags up, it's usually because there's something stopping the flow of the water being able to go down. They have this stuff called liquid plumber that is designed to go down in the pipes and eat away what is clogging the pipe from flowing freely so that you don't have a mess in your bathroom or in your kitchen. On the back of the bottle, there is a demonstration of how this works. I always wondered, for those of you who understand plumbing, I have a, a, a plumber in the room, at least one or two, or shade tree plumbers. I always wondered why didn't the pipe go straight down? And why did it have a loop in it before it goes down? Always wondered that. And since y'all know me a little bit, y'all know I'm crazy. So I had to start, I had to go up under the sink. Um, nobody knew, you know, when the house is empty, you can start talking to stuff, bruh. You know, won't, won't nobody respond thinking you're crazy because you go talk to stuff. I talked to remote controls. Um, I try to figure out how in the world that the remote control works. It tells me there is some things you're not going to understand because some things you can't see, but you got the power to control. So I'm talking to the pipe up under the sink, and I'm trying to understand why is it that it don't go straight down? The pipe explained to me the reason why I don't go straight down is, so, is because I got to have room for air to get in to flow through, and just in case I get bagged up, there is enough room for the plumber to push it through and over the hump. I start shouting right there. When God says that if you confess your sin, when you unconfess your sin, you are trying to live life with a pipe that goes straight down. But when you live with the mindset that if I confess my sin, the devil in hell and all his imps can't hold it against me no more, then you allow God's liquid plumber to flush you clean so that anything that is holding you up, God can wipe it away. Uh, confessing our sin before God frees us of knowing that we have not. All you got to do is tell God about it. I told you, I told you, I do stuff. 
not for other people to applaud me. I do stuff because I'm trying to get right with God. I want to help you to understand. Getting right with God is not an automatic thing. It's something you got to work at every day. I know you've been saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, speaking in other tongues, water baptized. I know you've been doing that a long time, but you still got some sin that you got to deal with. And, and, and I've learned that, that, that if I tell God about it, I got a weapon for the enemy when he tries to bring it back up again. Uh, you know what bothers me the most? When people say they forgave you, but they ain't forgot about it. I mean, baby, we talked about that 25 years ago. You still bring it up. You know the reason why you bring it up? Because you ain't got over it and I'm going past it. And what we got to learn is that once we give it to God and once we ask for forgiveness, God cleans our slate. But it's the job of the enemy to always bring up, you know what you did. I want to stop by there to tell somebody, as soon as you confess the sin, God has expunged it from your record. 